ඒකයි බය නැතුව මම Nokia Android smartphone එක ඕන කෙනෙකුට ගන්න කියන්නේ. සමදා අලුත් වන Nokia. The Attorney General yesterday advised the Criminal Investigation Department to arrest the Swiss Embassy staff member Garnier Francis on charges of exciting disaffection against the government and fabricating false evidence to be used in a future judicial proceeding. The arrest was carried out after Francis was produced before a psychological review panel at the National Institute of Mental Health last afternoon. After being produced before the Colombo Chief Magistrate's Court, she was ordered to be remanded until the 30th of this month. Following this development, the Swiss Federal Department of Foreign Affairs released a statement stating concern and calling on the Sri Lankan judicial authorities to ensure better protection of its employees' personal rights in any further proceedings and compliance with national law and international standards. The release stated that the FDFA and the Swiss Embassy in Colombo will continue to meet their responsibilities as an employer and do everything in their power to assist the member of staff concerned. The statement also criticized the lengthy interrogation that the alleged victim was subjected to as a cause for concern given her alleged ill health following the ordeal and statements by senior officials regarding the veracity of her claims. In the meantime, Swiss ambassador to Sri Lanka Hans Peter Mock met with President Gotabaya Rajapaksa yesterday. During the audience, the head of state said that investigations had revealed the alleged abduction to be a total fabrication. The president had also pointed to irrefutable evidence sorted through by investigators such as Uber reports, telephone conversations and CCTV footage that add weight to this conclusion. The Swiss ambassador was also presented with the government's view that the embassy staff member may have been compelled by interested parties to bring the president and the government into disrepute. The president also requested the ambassador to cooperate with the government to conduct the investigation to its end so that the truth can finally emerge. With discrepancies reported in the series of events stated by both the Swiss embassy and the alleged victim baffling investigators initially, further investigations uncovered no evidence of any such abduction. The initial complaint delivered by second officer of the Swiss embassy Raoul Embach to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs stated the location of the abduction as the vicinity of a prominent girls school in Colombo 7 where the victim was abducted and sexually abused by five individuals in a white vehicle after arriving for a parent teacher meeting. However, after reviewing the related CCTV footage, investigators found that the victim had not in fact visited the location on the date stated. On interviewing the victim's Uber driver, it was revealed that the victim had travelled to a location on Palmyra Avenue instead on the day. CCTV footage from the vicinity of the Palmyra Avenue location showed the victim arriving at the location, the residence of a former teacher of her daughter, who had incidentally applied for a Swiss visa at the time. The Attorney General's department told court that CCTV footage shows Francis leaving the apartment complex two hours later and attempting to flag down a three-wheeler taxi. In this backdrop, during initial questioning on the 8th of December, the victim told investigators that she had deliberately provided false information to the Swiss embassy under pressure from her alleged abductors. The victim subsequently told investigators that the abuse at the hands of her abductors took place in the living room of the teacher's residence at Palmyra Avenue. Having also revealed that this fact was communicated to the Swiss embassy by her on the 5th of December, the embassy remained silent on this vital piece of information. However, the security officer at the Palmyra Avenue location denies allowing any unknown individuals into the premises, which was corroborated by CCTV footage. Further, the judicial medical officer's report following a medical examination reveals no evidence of physical harm to the victim. The court was told that the victim and her family had been given sanctuary at the Swiss ambassador's residence since the 26th of November, where the victim's mobile phones still remains out of reach of investigators to date. State counsel Janaka Bandara then requested the court to remand the victim as a clear message that the country's reputation is not something to be toyed with. The Attorney General's department also moved the court to order the victim to be held in custody in order for investigations to be carried out to determine the intentions of the victim in fabricating such a story and if any outside players may be involved as well. With that being the case, the alleged victim was remanded until the 30th of December. Maxis number 1 tie in Sri Lanka.